All right. Well, hi, everyone. I am Emily Lockdowalla from the Planetary Society, and I'm here with the Lunar Laser Communication Demonstration Team for a really fun activity this evening. I'd like to begin by introducing Don Borison, the principal investigator for LLCD over there in the MIT Lincoln Laboratories. Um, hi, Don. How's it going? Hi, Emily. Uh, thanks for having us uh, join here. Yep, we're here at the uh, MIT Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts, where we have our operations center. Uh, you can see uh, there's a lot of people standing around. Uh, we're actually making a link work right now, so let me explain what that is. Uh, we're demonstrating a new technology here that uses lasers to send very high data rate communications between uh, a ground terminal on the Earth, which happens to be in uh, White Sands, New Mexico, and uh, our little terminal, which is on a satellite called LADI, which is in lunar orbit right now. Um, and so uh, in the last uh, few minutes, we got our link actually up and running, um, and we can do 20 megabits per second on the uplink and up to 622 megabits per second on the downlink, but that's kind of like 100 cable modems. Um, so it's a very, very high uh, capacity link, um, and this is brand new uh, for, for NASA. Um, so the way that it works is we have a laser on the ground, and he blinks on and off uh, mil many millions of times a second, and uh, we receive the signal upstairs, um, and the, the data gets there. And similarly, we blink uh, a half-watt laser in space uh, many hundreds of millions of times a second, and we catch it in our telescopes uh, in the ground terminal in White Sands. Um, so that's basically how it works. We have various uh, parts of the system. Uh, the white sands is connected to here via ground lines. Um, we also talk to the operations center for the satellite, which is in California, in uh, Mountain View, California. And we also talk to the science operations center, which is in um, Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And in fact, uh, Don Cornwell, our mission manager, uh, is there right now. I'm Don Cornwell from uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And uh, uh, Don, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what NASA hopes to do with this technology? Well, uh, Emily, so uh, NASA's needs for uh, faster download speeds for data from space grow every day just like it does for the rest of us uh, at home and at work. And so uh, the first thing we'd like to do with this new technology is to bring back more of the high-resolution images and movies in HD, 3D from all those exciting places that our space, probe, space probes visit all over the solar system so that those of us still left on Earth uh, can have a virtual experience and be part of it as well. Uh, and, and also, I'd like to point out that as humans go further into space, we're going to need HD video links, like this 20 megabit per second link that Don talked about, to those astronauts so that, uh, so that we can uh, actually keep them closer to home for their own psychological well-being. So there are lots of applications for this new technology for NASA. Well, that's really awesome, and we're going to get to actually put this technology to use uh, this evening. So um, let's go back to MIT Lincoln Laboratories and see if we can get something going over the moon. Right. So um, what we have is a very high data rate uplink, and we have a high rate data rate downlink. And so we can send videos up, but there's no astronauts right there to receive it, and there's obviously um, no astronauts there to send us something. So what we've done is we've configured our system so we can send a video or any other signal that we like there. It actually receives it right down to the bits, and then we take those bits and remodulate them back onto the downlink. Uh, we catch them in White Sands, New Mexico, across the ground lines to here, and we play it. And so there's some delays. Uh, it's about one and a third seconds on the uplink, and one and a third seconds for light to go on the downlink, a few milliseconds across the country. Um, we add about two seconds of delay for our processing of the signal itself, and there's two seconds for the video. So it's about a seven-second total delay. So what we're going to see is uh, a video locally taken here in our room, and then seven seconds later you're going to see uh, it's been to the moon. I'm just cracking up over here because we've already seen it. I'm seeing this delay happening right now. And just knowing that those pixels are flying to the moon, going all the way to the moon, being received on a spacecraft and coming back, that's just super cool. And so uh, it, even though that there's nobody there to receive it, which seems kind of tragic, um, I think that uh, it would be ex especially awesome if we could play a uh, special video greeting that my boss, uh, uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, Bill Nye, the planetary guy of the Planetary Society, has recorded something for you guys so that we can throw this video right over the moon and bring it back and see what he has to say. Absolutely. So uh, let's light off the video, um, and it's kicking off now, but now we need to wait 10 seconds until we see it uh, having been to the moon. 
here it comes. Hello world, Bill Nye the Science Guy and CEO of the Planetary Society here. This video just made a trip to the moon and back via NASA's LADEE spacecraft. That's nearly three quarters of a million kilometers. It's half a million miles. While LADEE orbits the moon, it's using laser technology to communicate with the Earth. It's like fiber optics, only without any fiber and going through deep space. Sending HD videos of me is a demonstration of how much this system can do. On future missions, scientists will be able to collect data from space faster than ever before. That means more data and more science. This is just one example of how space exploration drives the development of advanced technology. Space presents engineers with unique challenges. And tackling these challenges always leads to clever new ideas and clever new technology. But more importantly, the space program nurtures a culture in which we all expect that any technical problem can and will be solved. We all benefit from this. And come on, it's just cool. We can communicate with laser beams from at least as far away as the moon. So congratulations, NASA's LADEE laser communications team. You've done us proud. That's so awesome. He's going to be so excited to see that when he knows that that video has gone up and over the moon. I got to ask, just, you know, how, how big is the laser that you start with? And doesn't it spread out as it gets to the moon and it comes back? How big is it by the time it's come back to Earth? That's right. Well, all electromagnetic beams are spread out and lasers spread out a little bit, but not very much. And we start from space and it's a four inch telescope. And when it gets to the ground, it's a little under four miles. Uh, and that, some people know about lasers think, oh, gee, that's a lot. But you have to imagine what four miles looks like from a quarter of a million miles away. It's a dot, a tiny, tiny dot. And so a lot of the technology is about hitting that dot with our dot. Um, so, uh, yes, we solved all those, as he pointed out, uh, the challenges were there, and engineers figured out how to hit one dot with another dot and how to uh, squeeze data out of little tiny laser pulses. Um, and uh, it, Don Cornwell, I'm wondering what, um, what kind of new things will we be able to do at the moon or on Mars that we can't do now once we have this kind of technology available to us? Well, this, this sort of high two-way band, uh, two bandwidth will certainly enable uh, telepresence. So whether it's one of our robots exploring an asteroid with us being right there with a 3D uh, return of it coming back, or uh, whether you have an astronaut that's ill and you're getting a remote specialist to uh, look in, so to speak, and do a diagnosis, or perhaps even do surgery one day uh, to an astronaut remotely. Uh, telepresence and this, this two-way bandwidth is, is uh, you know, sort of the key, I think, is to make that happen. For me, I think I've, I've always liked the idea of humans and robots working in tandem, where you can have uh, humans controlling robots virtually by telepresence that allows humans to be close by the target, but you can still be taking advantage of all of the robot's capability to survive difficult environments. And, and this seems like this kind of technology is really going to enable humans and robots to work together to explore outward into the solar system. I guess it's the next best, next best thing to being there in some ways. So uh, I just have one last question uh, for Don Borison. What, um, what's been the, the most difficult thing about getting this technology flown into space for the first time, and what's the main hurdle that, um, that's in the way of us deploying it on future missions? Uh, well, the purpose of this uh, demonstration was that uh, we technologists have known for some years that you know, we could do this. Um, but, you know, if somebody has a very expensive mission uh, and we say, I have a new technology, it's just never been done before, he just doesn't want to sign up for that. And so the purpose here was to say, you know, we've made it work. Uh, we've made it work reliably. Um, and uh, boring is good. We try, I think we've achieved boring here. Um, and so that's what we're hoping for is to get to this, uh, gee, it just works, so that the next fellow will say, I'd like to sign up for that. And I say you sure have demonstrated. You can send HD video and audio right to the moon and back. It definitely works. I think it's been a fabulous experiment to participate in. I want to thank you guys so much for the invitation to be involved with this little demonstration this evening. I know Bill Nye thanks you. The Planetary Society thinks this is fabulous. And we wish you guys all the best at uh, success with, with the lunar laser communication demonstration and with getting this technology onto future missions. Thanks, Emily. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and good night. Thank you, everybody.